it's time for Coffee with the Chicken Ladies, a podcast for people who love chickens. Hey everybody and welcome. It's Chrissy and Holly from Coffee with the Chicken Ladies. We're here and this is episode number 15 of our podcast where we talk about everything chicken, family, fun, and more chickens. More chickens. We drink a ton of coffee. I'm talking a ton, but most importantly, we hug chickens every day. Every day. Every day. And don't forget to kiss them too. We drink coffee from a little coffee house here in Bel Air, Maryland. Coffee, coffee. What kind of coffee are we drinking today, Holly Ann? I don't know, but it's really good. Oh, it's still the Snickerdoodle. It's the Snickerdoodle. It's really good. So it's really good. You can't go wrong with it. If you love scones and just great coffee and you're local, head on over. You will not be disappointed. So we made it through February. Oh, just yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, February is so rotten. I think it deserved a song. I, I mean, it was a bad month between weather, between everything. You know what got me through, and probably you too, was all of our followers, our head huggers. Yeah, they've been pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. We just want to say thank you to everyone who listens to us, who follows us, who talks back and forth with us. We are having the time of our lives. We're loving it. Thank you, thank you. The one thing that we can ask is if you love this podcast and want to see us to continue to grow, please, if you can, leave us a written review on Apple Podcast. It can go a really long way to helping us. We would really appreciate it. Yeah, just as much as we appreciate every download, and we do appreciate every single download, every single comment. We are feeling your love. Yes, and we just wanted to take a moment just to say thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody. We're having a blast, and we hope you are too with us. Yeah. So, as we go on, going on about February's over, la la la, thank goodness. Yeah. So, what does March mean? March it's one of those months that you're like, okay, is it winter or spring? It's kind of in the middle. Yeah. And I can deal with that. Mm-hmm. I don't want to deal with, you know, deep winter anymore. Neither do I. But I mean, specifically, personally, for you and I, what does March mean? Oh, you're talking about our chicks. Chicks. So chicks. we have some exciting news. Yes, we ordered chicks and hopefully everything's going to be... Weather cooperates. All yes, those good things. we're going to be getting them in a few weeks and yeah. then you're going to see lots and lots of pictures. Yeah, we are really excited. It was a difficult decision because we were going back and forth with lots of different possibilities. We should backtrack just a little bit and it's been a couple of weeks since it happened as far as our broadcast went. But if you don't follow us on Instagram, we reported the sad news that Ricardo Montalban passed away. Yes, that was very sad and shocking. When I talked to you, I was shocked. Yeah. And we do mean Ray Rooster, Ricardo Montalban, and that's the actor. So So, Ricardo passed away. He had a heart attack. And we're still pretty sad. We miss him. But what happened is when Ricardo passed, he left. That coop is gigantic. It's big. And it's a really good sized yard. And so given the fact that a COVID is still around... And that we would have had to do a lot of driving to get the rare breeds and eggs that we wanted. Right. We opted to order order chicks. Yeah. And so our chicks are coming together so that they'll be nice and snugly warm That's in right. the box. And so they're going to be coming very, very soon. So the breeds that we ordered are, are, I'll name one, you name the other. Okay. The cream leg bar. Now, would you like to give the second one? Salmon Favaros. Yay! And then a pair of Egyptian Fayumis. So we're going to be seeing lots of really cool pictures. Yeah, it's really a good thing that, that my yards have a top on them. I'm really excited about the Fayumis. I'm kind of nervous because they're such good flyers. Oh, that was one of the things about them. They like yeah. to get up high. Yeah. But you do have a top on. And we have really high ladders. You're rotten. Yeah, there's top on the run. Yeah. So that's always good. we're going to build some like vertical, almost tree-like roosts for them. So they can go up high? Exactly, yeah. We can we can bring in a partial tree and, and get it set up and anchored in place so that they can fly up there. and Hopefully almost. they come down or else you're going to be going up that Again, tree. Again, that's why we have those big ladders. Yeah. I mean, this was a really risky buy, but you know I've been talking about these little chickens for so long. and Since I just November, mm-hmm, when mm-hmm. you saw them. At the poultry spot, yeah. The quartet. Yeah. Okay, so we're getting chicks. We're super excited. We're going to share the fun with everybody. Let me take a minute to tell you about Iowa Blue Farm. It's a woman-owned, family-run, all-natural chicken treat company in the Midwest. And we love supporting those woman-owned businesses. We really do. They make 100% all-American, oven-dried, black soldier fly grubs, 
for all types of poultry, including quail, including chickens and ducks and peacocks and turkeys. Yeah, turkeys. We forgot about turkeys. Mm -hmm. They're really high in calcium and protein, which can help your chickens plus be a treat. Exactly. They love that blue bag. They come running. They come running for the blue bag. I have to tell you that of all the treats I've ever fed my chickens, this might be the most popular for them. They love that. Honestly, it's like ravenous. They go after this blue bag. They are. The other thing that they do have, which we feed our chickens, Mm -hmm. is an organic layer feed, and it is amazing, let us tell you. It's fantastic. I honestly say it's one of the best feeds I've ever used on my chickens in 20 years. Fresh grains, there's no dust. My flock loves it. My flock loves it, too. The other exciting news that we have for you from Iowa Blue Farm is they're giving us a coupon code. And it's going to be coffee in all caps 25. For all of our listeners, if you use this code coffee all caps 25, you get 25% off site wide on your first order, which that is amazing. That's a fantastic value. Okay. So the other thing is they're baked with love, shipped with care, and shipping shipping is always free. free. Okay. So we're ready to move on to Mm -hmm. our. Drama. Mm. Breed Spotlight. I think our breed this week is fitting of that magnificent introduction. Since we made the announcement that (laughs) we are getting chicks. That's right. And since, you know, we had to do the cream leg bar. I will say that I've had this breed on my radar for a couple of years. Yes. I really, really like them. They're an amazing combination of two of my favorite breeds. We'll get to that in a second. This is even more special because not only did we decide to get ourselves some of these chicks, but we're going to be talking to someone special in just a little bit who raises cream leg bars. Yes. We're going to be working with our new international correspondent, and it's Fiona. She's the floof lady, and she also has a YouTube channel. English Country Life. It is fantastic. Yes, and we're so excited to be working with her. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to be doing later is talking different segments with her all about different things. Right. And this is one of the chickens she raises. Yes. And then on top of it, we're getting these chicks. Yes. We are very excited about these chicks. So the Crested Cream Leg Bar, it was a breed developed in the United Kingdom in the 1930s at Cambridge University. It was a genetic specialist who was working on autosexing breeds. They're largely the result of mixing true Arcanas, the South American Arcana. Right. Not Americanas. Right. Arcanas. Arcanas. And there's a bit of Hamburgs and Rhode Island Reds mixed back in there. If you want to hear some interesting history on the Rhode Island Red, go back and listen to episode nine. It's a really stuff. good episode. It really is. I love talking about the Rhode Island Reds, even though I don't have any. They were and really interesting. They were very, very interesting. So the leg bar is a mixture of the South American Arcana and the Leghorn, specifically brown Leghorn. Oh, the brown Leghorn. Yeah. Wow. That's, I, I would think white Leghorn, but hey. Well, interestingly enough... At the same time, there was another but genetically identical strain that was created at the same time by a different scientist working on genes. And the interesting thing is when they genotyped these, they were identical. It was the same cream leg bar genes. Um, And he created that breed by breeding gold leg bars with a white leg horn. Oh, that's so cool. white leg horn cockerel. So... The Cream Crested Leg Bar were recognized as an official breed by the British Poultry Club in 1958. Right. But get this, 20 years later, it was already in threatened status. That's crazy. And guess what decade that was? (laughs) I'm going to have to guess the 70s. 1970s, you're right. It feels like when we talk about breeds and when things are transforming or either they're starting up, they're coming back, it's always the 70s. It is. And we don't think about that as such a crucial time, but it really was. It really was. The pattern there is inescapable. We see it, and not just in the U.S., where people wanted to go back to the land. Yeah. They were disconnected from their food sources, and they really wanted to relearn these skills that had been lost. So, at the time, there was really no market for novelty eggs the way there is now. And as we know, this like of funny colored eggs, I guess. We know this changed about 25 years later as the Americanas became popular. And they're popular because of a blue egg. Exactly. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. The color blue in the egg makes them very, very popular. It's beautiful. Currently, the cream crested leg bar is designated as a rare breed uh, in the United Kingdom by the Rare Breeds Survival Trust, which is sort of like the equivalent of our Life Second Servants. Right. Uh, so the Americana shows up in the crest and that beautiful blue egg, the cream leg bar's leg. The leghorns show up in their active nature, slender frame. I was going to say, the frame of this bird reminds me 
a million percent of the leghorn. Yeah. Both sexes are shades of cream and gray. It's very pretty earthy colors. The roos have more visible barring than the female, so it's a little more dramatic. And my favorite part. Yeah. The crest. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the crests are adorable. It's, it's unusual. It's a half it's, crest. Yeah, half crest, and then they have that adorable fluffy leghorn comb on the front half. And the combs always seem to be a little bent, which makes it even quirkier and cuter. Yeah, it's really cute. So, I mean, they're really an unusual looking chicken. They definitely are. And the grays and the browns go very well together. It's pretty. In the color. I mean, it's really a pretty chicken, and it's known to have really good personality. Yes. As you would expect from birds with such a Mediterranean heritage, white earlobes. And again, hens are not good setters. You need an inkshot or a broody head, right, if you're going to hatch these. I mean, I've never, I've had, you know, Lucy never right. go broody ever. Yeah, it's just unusual. That's not what they were selected for, the Mediterranean. They, they are like the person, they're kind of like me, where they never want to sit down. It's like, you got to keep go, moving. Go go. Go, 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 go. Go here, yeah. go there, go here. Can't stop. But I will say this. Everyone says get a leghorn, they don't eat as much. That is so untrue. <laughs> Lucy's an eating machine. Oh my goodness. She really is. She's the smallest one and knocks everybody over. Yeah. So I'm, I'm anxious to see how the babies are going to be. If oh, they're going to kind of, you know, and the, the babies kind of remind me, they look more like Gertie than anybody else that we have. They do. They have some of those similar markings. So I'm excited to see how she's going to be with somebody who kind of looks more like her because she's in with the lavenders and they're just the I'm total gonna opposite. I'm going to put the cream leg bars in that coop. Yeah. 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 And the Favreaux's because, I mean, that's the laid back the crew. Gen the gentle crew, yes. So, well, speaking of chicks, so again, as we said, these were developed during auto sexing uh, projects. So, yes, the cream crested labor can be auto sexed. Which is good for people who have, like, they can't have a roux. Yeah. And they, they definitely want to make sure 100% right, that right. they have a female. Because even if you get a bullet in the store, that they only guarantee 90%. There's yeah. still 10% exactly. that they can't guarantee. Auto sexing is basically 100%. They have the markings. The female have markings. The male, they have different. Mm -hmm. So they can tell the difference. Right. So this breed has a single comb. As we said, it's got that quirky, adorable falling over comb with a half crest. I would watch the comb in winter. Be a little careful oh, with yeah. that. Uh -huh. They're supposed to be reasonably cold hardy, but they do have that lighter body mass, and they probably need a little extra food and maybe some fluff to cuddle into. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and as we mentioned, they're very active foragers, so we have to make sure that they have opportunity to get enough exercise. Well, with mine, in between the lavender Orpingtons uh -huh. and the Faberols, uh -huh. They're going to be set. That's some serious fluff right there. I mean, they are totally going to be set. Okay, so they're, again, this is that Leghorn parentage, I think. Very good layers of blue, occasionally green eggs. Ooh. Your pullets start laying at a six-month mark, which That's is pretty good early. for a rare breed. Yeah. 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 They lay an average of four medium to large sized eggs per week. Which is pretty good. And that's, you know, the, the leg horn coming out in exactly. egg production. Yeah. So here's where it gets interesting for us in the U.S. Leg bars have only been in the U.S. since the fall of 2010. Wow. Yeah. They were imported by Green Fire Farm. Again. Yeah. Uh -huh. but that's the main farm they're going to come from. Right. And most of the first batch didn't make it because when they arrived here, they contracted the U.S. strain of Merrick's disease. Oh. Yes. There was a surviving trio, and they were Merrick's resistant. Oh, wow. And they were used to build up the U.S. population with later importations. Nice. Yeah. They're not currently recognized by the American Poultry Association. They are pretty newcomers. So I was going to no say, standards. that doesn't surprise me. Right. So I would think if we ever got to the point where we wanted to breed this chicken, we would probably have to get our hands on a copy of the British Culture Poultry Club's confirmation standards. Oh, yeah. It's interesting, this story about them being imported by Green Fire Farm and the Merricks, because the Swedish flowers were one of, there were two Swedish breeds imported by Green Fire Farm at the same time. Okay. Them. One of them really had a tough time with the U.S. strain of Merricks. The Swedish flowers were actually pretty resistant to They were to pretty it. hardy. Yeah, it's really interesting to me. So descriptions of the personality vary. So I've heard multiple things. Uh -huh. I've heard both they're highly intelligent. Yeah. And they're very active. Yes. And that they're just high energy. 
I haven't heard anything bad about, you know, aggression or well, flighty. I've heard the same, that's what I've heard. I've seen that nervous and flighty described. Really? In some I've cases. not seen that. So I did some reading and yeah, I wonder if this is a chicken where you get out what you put in. I really think with most chickens, yeah. you know my philosophy. Right. It doesn't matter if it's the hardest, toughest breed to crack. If you start Early. right from the beginning, yeah. from day one, and you know how I am. They're going to be in shirts in you know, walking around with them <laughs> everywhere. Handle them. We'll handle them a lot, too. I mean, we'll handle them. They'll be handled so much that they'll be used to it. And I think it is about what you put in, what you get back. Yeah. So in my reading, I saw a couple of things. I saw a couple sources that said the production strain, which I guess at this point would sort of be a hatchery strain, right? are the nervous ones. The purer breeder strains are supposed to be sweet and friendly. Okay. I'm not sure how much stock to put in that. I do know that the hatchery that we ordered from did get their leg bar stock from one of the top leg bar breeders in the U.S. Right. So pretty happy about that. They are supposed to be rather healthy birds, few problems. Just like any crested bird, I would do a lice check. Oh, crest. yeah. Check for lice and mites. Well, hopefully crest. when we get them when they're babies, they're not even going to have that crest going. But, I mean, like when you, you're you saying like as you go on, yeah, to, yeah. as they grow older, exactly. to keep checking on check the, the crest. crest. Yeah. I only have one crested bird, and that's honeysuckle. And I do have to check her regularly. I haven't failed any mites in her crest, but well, that's good. That's a good. That's a place where mites would really like to hide. Yeah, exactly. Um, the favorals, you're going to want to check feet. Feet. Yes, I'm always checking the brahmas for. And I'm not used to having one with feathered feet, so that's going to be new for me. <laughs> it's adorable. So yeah, the, I mean, you really can't go wrong with this chicken. The the number one thing that I've heard about this one is that they're intelligent. Yeah. So again. Way back when we talked to Jeannie Keys with Click With Your Chick, uh-huh. this is one of the chickens that may catch on or really early with training. Yeah, we could try that. It would be fun to do some chick training with Learning them. Learning their names, uh-huh. uh, different things to teach them, and we'll go back and review and yeah. maybe give Jeannie a call right. for some help. I did also read that if you want the good bloodlines, if you want the top quality breeder bloodlines, you're going to pay quite a bit more than the usual cost of a chick or a pullet. Which we know. Yes. <laughs> We paid quite a bit more for these chicks, but it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. So if you're looking for more information online, there is a Cream Leg Bar Club. We'll have it in the show notes, but it's creamlegbarclub.com. Okay. And there's got to be some sort of Facebook groups, too. You can go on and look. Yeah, I, I honestly didn't check Facebook. I will say that on the Cream Leg Bar Club site, there was a really good essay by Green Fire Farm about importing nice. the leg bars. It's worth a read. The other place you can look is the UK's Rare Breed Survival Trust website. Okay. They should have a little information about the okay. leg bars there, too, since they're a rare breed. I just have one thing I wanted to say. Sure. Kind of on subject, off subject. Before we bring Fiona in, just to let everybody know that we do have a new Facebook group. Uh-huh. Talking about Facebook groups with the leg bar. It's called Backyard Hen Huggers. And you can join. And it's a great place where we can share text and photos. Right. And that's something that we wanted to be able to share with everybody. We wanted to see everyone's pictures. Yeah. So if you're interested in sharing stuff with us right there in the group, it's really easy. Just join Hen Huggers, Backyard Hen Huggers. It's a fun little group right now. It's not a lot of heavy stuff right now. It's fun. Like no. people are asking for name suggestions for their chickens. It's and really sort of fun. Thing. Yeah. And we can go back and forth a little bit more there. Yes. Okay. So now that we've talked about the crested cream leg bar, which we're super excited about. Yes. And we know that our brand new superstar international correspondent from across the pond in England, Fiona, has these cream leg bars. Mm -hmm. So this is the first time that we're bringing her on. I want to introduce her to everyone and just give her a warm welcome. Fiona's been working with Buff Orpingtons, Cream Leg Bars, and Old English Pheasants for quite a while now. So we wanted to bring her on and collaborate with her. Her YouTube channel is Holly Ann. It's English Country Life. The videos are absolutely gorgeous. I encourage all of you to go check it out. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so let's bring in Fiona. Hey. Hi. I love that welcome. I couldn't have asked for anything better. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome to the table. Everyone brought some coffee. We're here. And we wanted to really introduce you to our listeners because you're going to be adding so much in the upcoming few months and what we're going to be talking about. So today, we're going to be talking about the avian flu. But before we even go there, we know that you keep cream-crusted leg bars. Yes. 
Yes, we've had a few over the years, and at the moment we have three, and there are all three are named after 80s singers, and they are real little personalities. So we've got Wilcox, Moye, and Lennox. Yay! And they live life at 100 miles an hour. They are amazing. Is that your favorite thing about them, their personality? All three are different in so many ways, and uh, they're just curious the whole time. The only thing is, the, the only downside with them is that they make a noise like a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> It's the weirdest thing. All of the other hens have got lovely kind of melodic voices and the crested cream leg bars are squawking. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, they are tiny dinosaurs, so. But their eggs are amazing. Their eggs are a beautiful uh, pale blue. It's They are an absolute joy to look at. We are definitely looking forward to getting some beautiful blue eggs from our babies. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely, definitely. And those personalities, we could definitely give them a run for their money. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> they got to keep up with us, right? I don't know. <laughs> These days, it's hard for me to keep up with a chicken. I know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, so we know that you have these beautiful chickens and we want to talk about something and, and have you help educate us on what the avian flu actually is. Fortunately for us in the U.S., we are not dealing with it right now. We've had a couple of outbreaks in, say, the last 20 years, but they've been uh, low pathogenic and without major risk. And then we understand that what you're dealing with is a lot more serious. Well, we've had, this is the second time we've had restrictions in the UK. The biggest set of restrictions was 2016, 2017. And it's one of the biggest issues for poultry keepers at the moment in the UK. I mean, the disease is really horrible. The highly pathogenic strain has got a 90 to 100% mortality rate, oh, okay. and it can kill within 48 hours. And it's not a nice disease for the, for the poultry at all. Wow, it really yeah. is horrible. It sounds really bad. So... Basically, the UK has taken some steps to prevent this from going even further. So why don't you tell us about what the restrictions are on the chickens at this point? Well, it's actually coming to two tiers. So back in uh, November last year, on the 11th of November, we had a number of restrictions, which meant we could still free range our birds. And we did free range our birds in, in our field. But we had to cover the feeders. We had to cover the drinkers. We had to take measures to ensure that wild birds weren't encouraged onto the land because the biggest risk for spreading the disease is wild birds, particularly wild fowl and their feces. So if we have any geese or ducks or even any of the the local songbirds that become infected. If they poop in the field and our chickens happen to come across the poop, they could become infected. Chickens over here so easily get parasites because of wild birds. And people have to understand these things, wild birds can definitely pass and transmit different things to your chickens. Completely. Yeah, I mean... It's a natural process. One of the biggest things that we deal with in terms of worms, one of the the biggest ones we keep an eye out for is gape worms. And that actually is spread by wild pheasants coming onto the land and the gape worm eggs are spread through their feces. And we have to keep a close eye out for that because we do free range. Yeah. With any free ranging, your chickens are going to come in contact if you're in any kind of area with feces from other animals, wild birds, squirrel, anything and they're curious and it's on the ground and that's not going to stop them from right and taking it in so how long you said that restrictions have been on since last fall yeah that was the 11th of november the first set of restrictions came in and then we had a number of cases in captive poultry so the government then reassessed the risks they do regular risk assessments which they publish online that anyone can read And on the 5th of December, they announced that on the 14th of December, that everyone who had chickens, ducks, geese, whether they're pets, whether they're livestock, we would all have to keep those chickens indoors or in fully netted enclosures for the foreseeable future. And actually that, I think it's worse for the chicken keepers than it is actually for the chickens. We've got ours in polytunnel structures covered with bird netting and then debris netting over the top. We've still got feeders and drinkers within the netted areas under cover because that's another one of the requirements. But the chickens seem to be adjusting really well to being enclosed. I'm not. They are. (laughs) 
that must be difficult to deal with. It is really hard actually seeing them when they're normally roaming around the field and they're grazing on the grass. And we've got, I mean, we've got nine of the Orpingtons at the moment within a three meter wide by 12 meter long enclosure, which actually is a, you know, it's a large space, but there's no grass anymore. Right. I mean, the grass went so quickly. It was terrifying. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah, that grass is the first to Chickens go. Chickens can defoliate a patch of ground, <laughs> I think, faster than anything. No. It's amazing. It's crazy. So are any of your breeds not doing well under the confinement? The one I was worried about was the old English pheasant fowl because they're a very, very old breed. They're very lightweight. They're very agile. They're, you know, they're so energetic. Mm-hmm. So they were the ones I was worried about. But we've given them lots of different heights of things to climb on. They've got old chairs, which they sit on the seats. They climb on the backs. They fly on top of the coops. They've got high perches. And they're just active all day. They really don't seem concerned. And I've taught them new tricks. So when I go in, they fly onto my shoulder now. It's great. (laughs) Oh, that's so cute. That is cute. So practically speaking, how small are the holes in the netting that you use? They have to be, according to the requirements, they have to be small enough so that birds cannot encroach through the mesh. So ours are five mil. That's what we've gone for. And we've had no birds getting in at all. No sparrows, no wrens, no robins, nothing very small has managed to get into the enclosures at all. And that's enough. But the big thing for us was to put debris netting over the top. So the types of thing that builders put on scaffolding. So that if a pigeon or a blackbird does sit on top and they poop, that those feces aren't actually dropping down inside the enclosure. I mean, we still have enclosed feeders we still have our drinkers inside shelters Mm -hmm. so things dropping down can't get into the water and the food but i feel better having the debris netting over the top another layer of protection yeah so any news on when the restrictions will be lifted no (laughs) well the latest risk assessment that's actually just come out is looking the most hopeful that i've seen in quite a while it's still got the risk in wild birds of being very high it's still got the risk for captive poultry as being medium where proper restrictions have been taken and high where restrictions aren't being followed properly but they're now saying that the wildfowl are now leaving the uk that with the warmer temperatures coming around that the virus will be less likely to spread because it seems to thrive in cooler temperatures. So the hope is that we will be looking at the restrictions being lifted in the next, I'm hoping, four to five weeks. But when we went through this in 2016, 2017, it wasn't until the 28th of May that they actually lifted those restrictions. So we've just got to wait and see. And I I think, you know, the government scientists are actually assessing the risk the whole time. And we'll we'll just have to wait and see how it progresses. Opposite of what I usually think about viruses and and different things like that is when it's warm, they tend to thrive, but actually not. Let's talk about COVID times. Over here in the summer, the COVID seemed to go away on this. And then when everybody's in and it's colder, it does thrive a little bit more. Talking about COVID, it's quite interesting because one of those things we're required to do for the avian influenza restrictions is to make sure that people coming onto site have um, undertaken some biosecurity measures. So we have to have foot washes and foot scrubs. We have to disinfect wheels of vehicles. And actually, our COVID lockdown measures have meant that compared to 2016 2017 it's so much easier because we've locked our gates no one's coming in and if they do come in we know exactly who they are we know exactly where they're going we're not going to see other poultry keepers either so we don't have to think about changing our clothes or scrubbing our boots so actually the covid restrictions have helped us to some extent with the avian influenza restrictions it's really a lot easier to put those biosecurity practices in place. Yeah, if you're doing it with people, sure. just add the chickens in and then you got it and it makes it easier for the chickens. Yeah, Definitely. I mean, if you if you want to know more about it, I do have a video on avian influenza and what we're required to do actually on the YouTube channel because the, the housing bit was a bit which worried most people. And actually, once you started to think about it, because you have to have fully netted enclosures, you could just put a washing line up 
and hang netting over and then zip tie up the ends. Right. And providing the chickens were in that netted area, he met the restrictions. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. And five mil, you were talking about the openings being five mil. For us, I think that's a little bit less than a quarter inch. Right. To give people the idea of really what the mesh needs to look like. Right. Because small birds, they can go into little tiny spots. Right. You'd be surprised what a small bird can sweep through. Exactly. And I think that's where the debris netting comes in as well, because here I'm finding that they're less likely to try and get in underneath or down low. They're trying to get in actually quite high up. So the two layers really give you a lot of extra safeguard. Very much so, yeah. Yep, excellent. So that's good that there is an end in sight. Yeah, we'll keep our fingers crossed because just a reminder, our listeners, that we're going to be working with Fiona on a lot of mini segments. But one of the things we're going to be doing is once she has a broody hen, she's going to be taking us through the entire process of the broody hen hatching her eggs, which we're really excited about. And once we talk about it here with Fiona... She is going to have all the videos on her YouTube channel, English Country Life. English Country Life, and you can go over and see it. And you can meet the broody hen over there with the video and, mm-hmm. and see her. So once we talk about everything, then you can head on over there and check her YouTube channel out. Yeah, we'll follow through the broody hen from identifying if they're broody in the first place, because actually it's not that straightforward, particularly if you're not sure and have never looked after a broody hen before, to make sure that they're fully set and want to sit on eggs. So we'll follow it through all the way through. Okay. It's going to be so much fun. We really can't is. wait. And in the meantime, we're still going to be doing our mini segments with Fiona every week. So that's something really fun to look forward to. And the next time we talk to Fiona, it's going to be about the differences in the US yes. versus the UK in chicken keeping. And yeah. believe it or not, we do a lot of things the same. And believe it or not, we do some things different. So it's going to be fun to talk to you about those things. And thank you. Thank you so much for coming on to talk to us about this today. Thank you. We really appreciate your time, Fiona. And again, the video that Fiona mentioned on avian influenza is on her YouTube channel, English Country Life. Check it out. We'll see you next week. Bye. 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 It's so much fun talking to her. I mean, even on a serious subject. Yeah. It's it's really fantastic to get her point of view. She's amazing. Yeah, she's fantastic. So let's move on to our next segment, which is... Oh, cracking the eggs. <laughs> she was going to crack eggs until I came up with that. Cracking the eggs. I was going to have to crack like six eggs Sorry. to get there. So we're cracking the eggs. Now, let's just say you tested this recipe like a few weeks ago. I did. And the girls and Joe devoured it. Oh, Pete did too. It was good. I think you even got a text from Pete while you were here. I did. He was like, that was so yummy. <laughs> <laughs> so we figured let's get it straight off on cracking the eggs. And it yeah. is... Buttermilk baked donuts. Oh my God. Fantastic. And these are gluten and dairy free and you do not miss it at all. No, you don't. You can obviously cook with gluten and dairy if that's what you have on hand. These donuts, I'm going to toot my own horn a little bit. (laughs) These donuts are freaking amazing. (laughs) So these were so good. Yeah, they're they're ridiculously good. They're surprisingly easy to make. I was thinking, why didn't you come for two for all of us? You only brought one. I know. (laughs) I know. Damn. A whole dozen of these. This recipe makes half a dozen donuts. You only need one egg for half a dozen donuts. Did you have two eggs? I did, but I, my pan... You should have doubled it. Why didn't you double no, it? No, see, the, it's a pan problem. My pan only has six donuts. Oh, on it. man. You just need to buy me another donut pan. You want you want a full dozen. I have a donut pan here. Oh, well, I'm taking it with me. I'll go ahead and make a, another, a full dozen. So, yeah, you need a donut pan. And the donuts are prettiest if you actually pipe the batter in. Yeah. Trust me, because I'm lazy and I did not want to pipe it in yeah i tried to sort of push it in myself no don't even do it just don't even play with it it takes longer to do that yeah you can take like a a gallon size plastic bag a ziploc you can cut the corner off and just use that oh yeah it It looks it's a lot easier because this is a sticky dough oh yeah so anyway this is a again it's buttermilk baked donuts they are lightly spiced with cinnamon and nutmeg they smell amazing as they bake they were good. Yeah. And once they were out and cool, glazing is actually fun. You could do that with kids. Oh, yeah. You just need some powdered sugar and either oat creamer if you're going to keep it gluten dairy free yeah. or cream if you're on dairy. I just use soy milk because it's what I had at the time. Yeah. Anything like that. And powdered really just, sugar. Right. Right. You just grab the donut and sort of sink it down in the yeah. powdered sugar. Let you it could even add a little vanilla in or any Ooh, extract yeah. that That's you true. have. You could. That would be good. And, say, and turn the flavor of the donut 
completely different. This donut actually would be, probably be really good with a chocolate glaze, too. You could do a chocolate, like a yeah. ganache uh-huh. kind of thing. Or like a Christmas, you could use the peppermint extract. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Once again, make it your own. Make it your own. Yeah. That's where the glazes come in. You can just do whatever you want with the glazes. And the toppings, you could put chocolate chips. Sprinkles. I know that would make you happy. Sprinkles. Sprinkles. Yeah. Just suffice it to say, these are really, really, really good. Go make them. You will not regret it. Yeah. So check out the recipe. It's Uh on our show notes. Yep. And once again, show us pictures. We would love it. Yes. So it's time to move on to something we've had fun with over the last few weeks. Yeah. And again, it's one of my favorite segments, and it is retail therapy. Today's retail therapy is one that we've already put out there for everyone to take a look at. Yeah, we did a video. It's on our YouTube channel. It's on our Instagram. Uh Uh-huh. And basically, it's the chicken love box. Yeah, this is fantastic and fun. It was so much fun checking out that box. I mean, we were so surprised right in front of everybody of what was in it. We didn't know. And, you know, you can't go wrong when something gets delivered to your house every month. That's a special gift for you. Yeah, if you're into subscription boxes... You won't be disappointed with this one. It's good. not at all. This reminds me of a little story that I'm going to have to tell. Uh Uh-oh. But it's not that long or anything. Okay. But it reminds me of when we were like 12, maybe. Okay. And my mom would take us to Dana's, the clothing store. Oh, good heavens. (laughs) And they had (laughs) grab bags. And, you know, we would buy, how many of those grab bags did she end up buying us? A ton. And in retrospect, one of the main things that they all had in them were those those hair scrunchies. Oh, yeah. They were really cheap ones. Oh, and then all the charm necklaces. I don't even remember that. Oh, those funky earrings, the ones that look like airplanes that would just hang down. And we actually wore them. Did we? I have no memory of this. Yes. I I, all I remember are the bad scrunchies. They were like a dollar a bag. And then she would say, you guys want two or three, hon? And then she would end up buying us like five. Oh, for heaven's sake. No, I, I don't remember that. I don't remember that at all. But Jackie, thanks for doing that because yes, that's well, good stuff. Okay, so chicken grab love bags. Box. Chicken love box remind takes me back to my childhood when you got a grab bag. Yeah, and you don't know what's coming, but you know it's going to be something good. And this is you know a newer company that needs some love. And they have some really good stuff. So the Chicken Love Box has four different options that are available. Okay. Four different price points. Why don't you tell us? So there's one that's just a monthly t-shirt. Okay. And I got to say, I love the t-shirt. You're wearing the t-shirt yeah, now. I'm wearing the t-shirt. I love it. I love the t-shirt. I put it on and it was very flattering. It's very soft. soft. Yeah. I and like how soft it is. It's pretty. Yeah. It's a baseball tee. The sleeves are bright colors. And you can wear it a summer, really cool, winter. funky rooster on Yeah. It. Love him. Yep, it was really cool. So t-shirt only. Then there's a mini box that's a t-shirt and treats. Also okay. really cool. Which is good. It's both for you and your chicken. Exactly. Then there's the essential box. Right. Which is all the goodies without the t-shirt. Right. And then there's the mega box. That's what we open. Which is all the fancy stuff with the t-shirt as well. Right. So much fun. And I mean... The box itself is so cute. You yeah, could really reuse cute. it for something else. It's almost part of it. And it's a chicken couple with the heart around it on it's the box. So it's so cute. It's so cute. I mean, like the store, I use boxes like that to store like sunglasses or something. Whatever, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's kind of cute. So it's fun. It's delivered to you. And here's something really cool. What's uh, really cool? We have a discount code. Oh, yeah, for our listeners. Awesome. For our listeners. Uh-huh. So if you go in and type in CWTCL, all in caps, which is coffee with the chicken ladies. Right. It's easy to remember. Our initials. Mm-hmm. All caps. You will get $5 off your first subscription. Nice. And the stuff in here was so high quality. It really is. I mean, right down I'm to... I'm opening the box right now. Again. Again. Here we go. There we go. Okay. How are we going to split it? That's what we were wondering. We'll figure that out when we're off the air, because we're going to have a knockdown drag out over this chicken mask. I know. I know. The mask is cute. Mm-hmm. And the electrolytes, I almost think we should just put directly into our first aid kit for whoever needs them That's first. That's fine. We can do that. We got a tea towel. The tea cute towel. The, we each get a sign. There were two signs. That's true. There. That's nice chicken mug the sprouter set i really like the sprouter set which we're gonna start here which we kind of already talked about this Uh uh-huh 
we're going to start a jar because we had the, the lid goes Mason on the top of the jar. And then three little packs of seeds. Yeah. Yeah. It's perfect. And then we'll take pictures and show you how it's going. Yes. And the tea towel was so cute. And everything was like February. It was like lo- Valentine's themed yeah. right down to a little candy for your Valentine. Yeah. It's super cute. I love that the chicken items that were, I mean, it's for you and your chicken. I love that the chicken items were good. It's a it's a nice oh, packet of vitamins, electrolytes, and then there are... Treats. Treats that I've fed before and my hens love. It's a good brand of treats. Uh huh. Or it's a keychain in there. It's a good price. Good quality stuff. It's a lot of fun. Again, if you're into subscription boxes, monthly boxes, this is one for the chicken lover. Yeah, it's really fun. If you're interested in this, you got the code for five dollars off, right? which is again coffee with the chicken ladies initials, all caps. You can find her at chickenlove.com, L U V, or at Chicken Love Box on Instagram. Yes. She also is on Facebook. But the place to order is chickenlove.com. That will take you to Crate Joy, which is the company that you order through. Yeah, and they'll have all of your options right there. Right. Price points, everything. Everything you need to see. But what we're saying, no, we didn't even, like we mentioned the mask, but the mask is so nicely made. It's nice fabric. It's really cute. And such cute chicken fabric. Yeah. The chicken lady, you can't go wrong with it. The mug matches the tea. Yes. The mug and the tea match the keychain. And we had such fun opening it. If you want to see for yourself, our video is up on Instagram. It's up on YouTube. And you can see the, you know, we show you everything that when it comes out. Right. What we wanted to do before we end this episode was send out a big shout out to one of our youngest fans out there. And this guy listens to our show with his mom. Nice. And he follows us on Instagram. And from everything that we can see, he really loves chickens, his chickens, and takes great care of them. That's great. And so we wanted to send a big shout out to Kellen in Georgia and say thank you so much for listening to the show. Hey, Kelly, thanks for listening. And, you know, just keep listening. Keep working on your chickens. We'll talk to you later. Okay, so I think that's kind of it for today. I mean, we had so much fun talking about our chicks. It has been fun. I almost forgot. What? We have to talk about what's coming up next week. Okay, next week we're going to talk about the very old, unusual, and fascinating old English pheasant fowl. Ooh. Yeah, it is a chicken. It's not a pheasant. <laughs> We're going to talk about the differences between UK and US chicken keeping. As we go across the pond for coffee with Fiona. Fiona, Yes. Yes. We're going to crack the eggs and make some pasta carbonara. Yum. Mm -hmm. And our retail therapy spotlight is a fun new company called Power by Coffee. Oh my God. One of my favorites. Yeah. Recycled coffee ground bedding. And we are so excited to review this. This is going to be awesome. The smell is fantastic. Your chicken coop literally smells like coffee. I I mean, how can you go wrong? You can't. It's fantastic. I can't wait until (laughs) next week. Right? It's going to be so much fun yeah but until then everybody don't forget hug your chickens every day we'll see you next week thanks so much bye-bye bye-bye if you'd like to see more of us please follow us on instagram at coffee with the chicken ladies if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help us grow the podcast please leave us a review on apple podcast if you'd like to become a patron of the show so that we can bring you even more high quality chicken content please visit our patreon page patreon.com slash coffee with the chicken ladies. Thanks for listening.